Welcome, whoever you are, wherever you come from, and whatever you have done or failed to do. Welcome to this place where we celebrate the love of God and are inspired by the hospitality of Jesus Christ. May you find God's love, peace, and grace as we worship together. Please take a moment and to sign and pass the blue welcome booklets. Drive time devotionals are available on the church website. Our Lenten study classes will begin after worship at 1045. The adults and youth will meet in the chapel and the children's class will be in room 203. And now, as we listen to the beauty of the music in this sacred space, let us silently prepare ourselves for worship. Please stand for the call to worship. Praise the Lord, who you worship the Lord. Stand in awe of God and give glory to the Lord. For the Lord does not despise the poor and the needy, but when they cry out, God answers them. The hungry shall eat and be satisfied, and those who love the Lord shall offer praise.
may be seated. Let us pray. Bless us, holy God, eternal three and one, with a reverent sense of your presence, that we may be at peace and may worship you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Amen. Beloved people of God, not out dread or fear, but believing that God is faithful to forgive and heal, let us rid ourselves of what we need to carry no longer. Let us offer together our prayer of confession. Read with me the prayer of confession. Lord Jesus Christ, if we looked or longed for an easier gospel, a lighter cross, a less demanding savior, then turn our eyes from what we want to choose to the one who has chosen us. We ask this for your love's sake. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ we are forgiven. May God of mercy, who gives us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Since God has made us blessed, made us the blessed community, the church, let us greet one another with the peace and joy of Christ. Peace and joy be with you.
Let us pray. Holy God, open minds and hearts to the truth you would teach us in your scriptures and your word proclaimed. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Judges, the familiar story of the call of Gideon. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the oak of Ophrah, which belonged to Joash, the Abia's right, as his son Gideon was beating out white wheat in the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty warrior. Gideon answered him, But sir, if the Lord is with us, then why then has all this happened to us? And where are all God's wonderful deeds that our ancestors recounted to us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has cast us off and given us into the hand of Midian. Then the Lord turned to Gideon and said again, Go in this might of yours and deliver Israel from the hand of Midian. I hereby commission you. But Gideon responded, But sir, how can I deliver Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. But the Lord said to him, I will be with you. And from the Gospel according to St. Luke, this familiar parable which we have used before of the uh, parable that Jesus tells about the uh, faithful servants and the unfaithful servant. Jesus said a nobleman went to a distant country to get royal power for himself and then return. He summoned ten of his slaves and gave them ten pounds and said to them, do business with these until I come back. But the citizens of his country hated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we do not want this man to rule over us. When he returned, having received royal power, he ordered the slaves to whom he had given the money to be summoned that he might find out what they had gained by trading. The first came forward and said, Lord, your pound has made 10 more pounds. He said to him, well done, good slave, because you have been trustworthy in a very small thing, take charge of 10 cities. Then the second came saying, Lord, your pound has made five pounds. He said to him, then you rule over five cities. Then the third came saying, Lord, here is your pound. I wrapped it up in a piece of cloth for I was afraid of you because you are a harsh man. You take what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. He said to him, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked slave. You knew, did you, that I was a harsh man, taking what I did not deposit, reaping what I did not sow? Why then did you not put my money into the bank? Then when I returned, I could have collected it with interest. Then he said to the bystanders, take the pound from him and give it to the one who has 10 pounds. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So preaching on the theme of darkness, what we can learn from the dark. And preaching on darkness is like walking into a room with several doors. I open a door and find a whole new world of darkness to explore. Last week, we explored the darkness of disorientation and confusion. And this week, the darkness is fear, specifically the fear that makes us cut ourselves off from others, hide ourselves, and try to make ourselves disappear, to look smaller than we are. Start with Gideon, who was afraid of the Midianites. We know this because he was trying to thresh grain in a wine press. Now, if you know about a wine press, it's just a big stone kettle or wooden kettle um, with a hole at the bottom. You put the grapes in, you smash them down, the juice comes out the bottom. There's no air in a wine press, so it's got to be the worst place you can try to thresh grain. Threshing grain requires open space and wind to move. You pound the heads of barley or wheat to knock the kernels off, but doing that also 
knocks off pieces of the stalk and the stem, which is called the chaff. So to separate them, you take the whole thing and you toss it into the air when there's a nice breeze. The kernels, being heavier, will drop back to the stone floor and the chaff, being lighter, catching the wind, will blow away. So, if Gideon is trying to thresh grain down in a wine press where there is no air, he is literally picking pieces, kernels of grain, one by one, out of the dust to try to create enough to feed his family and maybe a bit of livestock without the Midianites seeing him and then coming in and stealing it. He is afraid. The slave in Jesus' parable is also afraid. We know this because he tells us, Lord, here is your pound. I wrapped it in a piece of cloth because I was afraid of you. Fear. Have you ever felt fear? Gideon and the slave are afraid, and so they hide. In fact, Gideon tries to make himself smaller, less than he really is. I love this section of scripture. When the angel comes to him with the call to rise up, and defeat the whole Midianite army, Gideon gives this great speech, which we could all have probably paraphrased at one time or another. My nation is the least of the nations, my tribe is the least of the tribes, my family is the least of the families, and I am the least of my family. You cannot possibly mean me. You want someone greater. The darkness of fear. How do we get out? In scripture, in this case, the way out is through the eyes, or better, the insight of others that God sends us. To get out of the darkness of fear, we may have to go, go against the grain of popular culture. Popular culture will tell us not to let anybody tell us who we are. Certainly there is wisdom in that. We don't want to live our lives always at beck and call of others' whims. And yet, consider how often it is only in the eyes of others that we begin to see our whole selves. How many of us have become something more than we imagined because someone saw something in us? that maybe we couldn't or weren't ready to admit. Mighty warrior? Is that, is that who I am? Many of you are familiar with this quote from Piglet to Winnie the Pooh. It's not in the scriptures if you're looking. It's, um, <laughs> it comes much later. It's in the Apocrypha or Epigrapha, could be. Piglet says to Pooh, if ever there is a tomorrow when we are not together, there is something you must always remember. You are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. But the most important thing is that even if we are apart, I will always be with you. Gideon, you are a mighty warrior, and I am with you. Rise up. The slave with the pound, which he had hidden, also saw a truth about himself. It came from his master, and the truth was this. You really aren't the right person for this job. Give his pound to the one who's made ten pounds. Now, there's a lot more going on in this parable than just the slave's self-discovery, but understand that parables are like a head of grain. They contain many kernels of truth and wisdom. So, let's narrow in on this one. The slave's fear was well-founded. He was not the right person for this task. We know there are people who are absolutely trustworthy with money. You never have to give a second thought that whatever you give them and entrust to them will be right there when you need it. The thought of using it for themselves would never occur to them. But there are also other people who are really good at making money and taking risks. The slave could be trusted absolutely 
with his master's money. He would not lose a penny. But he wasn't one to take risks. When we are in the darkness of fear, it is easy to listen only to the voices of fear that make us hide and shrink ourselves. But God can see us in our darkness and can speak a word of truth to lead us out of fear. Now, the voice of God's truth can come from simply reading through scripture or maybe something someone told you back in the past, a memory of a relative that said something to you. It could be a teacher, a coach, a minister, a friend who saw something in you. Something that when you thought about it made you stand up a little straighter, your heart beat a little more, your head held higher. Others see something in us we didn't see in ourselves. But it's true. Now, the word of truth can also be hard to hear. The word of truth may be, you know what? You're not the right person for this one. Thanks for volunteering. But I think someone else should carry this load. Gideon and the slave were afraid. But when they stopped listening to the voice of fear and listened to a truer voice, they were able to come through their fear. Gideon to lead the people to throw off the exploitation by the Midianites and the slave we hope to a job better suited for him. Here's the good news. God does not abandon us to our fears. God is always looking for a way to help us break through our fears and hear a truth we maybe have been finding hard to hear. It may be a rise up call. Yes, you're the one. You're the one. Stand up. Take this on. Lead. You are a leader. Then again, it could be a wake up call. Nope. Not you. It may be a word of truth that comforts and reassures us, but it may be a word of truth that startles us. But the most important thing, it will fit. It may sound improbable and crazy. You are the warrior who will free my people. And yet it will be absolutely Right, and once it gets in your mind, it is like a kernel in an oyster. You cannot let it go, and it will not let you go. It will be a dream and a passion rising up in you, and you will be like the prophet Jeremiah. There is a fire in my bones, and I cannot not. You are. Gideon, you are a mighty warrior. To the servant, you are absolutely trustworthy, but not a risk taker. God sees the full truth of us. And in the fullness of God's truth, as we live into the people God knows us to be, the darkness fades away. We find we are braver than we believe, stronger than we seem, and smarter than we think. And God is with us. Amen.
please be seated. Having just sung of the new creatures God calls us to be, a people of compassion and justice, let us bring our morning tithes and offerings. Let us pray together. O God, of whose bounty we have all received, accept this offering of your people, and so follow it with your blessing, that it may promote peace and goodwill among all people, and further your realm of justice, compassion, and joy. Amen. You may be seated. God of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, you promise to hear us when we pray in your name. <clears throat> Confident of your love, we offer our prayers. 
Empower the church throughout the world in its life and witness. Break down barriers that divide, that united in your truth and love, the church may confess your name, share one baptism, sit together at one table, and serve you in one common ministry. We pray for our sister churches in Racine and in our presbytery and our partner church in Cuba. Guide the rulers of the nations. Move them to set aside their fear and greed and vain ambitions and to strive together for justice and peace that all people may dwell secure, free of war and injustice. Hear the cries of the world's hungry and suffering. Give us, who consume most of the Earth's resources, the will to reorder our lives, that all may have their rightful share of food and medical care and shelter, and so have the necessities of a life of dignity. Restore among us a love of the Earth that you created for our home. Help us put an end to trashing its land and air and waters, and give us respect for all your creatures, that living in harmony with everything you have made, your whole creation may resound in an anthem of praise. Renew our nation in the ways of justice. Guide those who make and administer our laws to build a society based on trust and respect. Erase prejudices that oppress. Free us from crime and violence. Guard us from the peril of materialism. Give all citizens a vision of a life of harmony. Strengthen this congregation in its work and worship. Fill our hearts with your self-giving love that our voices may speak your truth and our lives show the image of Christ. Nourish us with your word and sacraments that our lives may witness to your love and grace for all the world. Look with compassion on all who suffer. Support with love those with incurable and stigmatized diseases, those unjustly imprisoned, those denied dignity, those who live without hope, those who are homeless or abandoned. As you have moved toward us in love, so lead us to be present with them in their suffering. Sustain those among us who need your healing touch, Heidi Lawrence, Shelley Lawrence, Jerry Grenier, Shauna Lehman, Louis Shapley, Bill and Lissy Blanford, Peggy Taylor, Annette Anderson, Mary Jane Johnston, Peggy Wagner, Daryl Sutton, Ed Hunt, Nancy Tobias, Larry and Ellen Cardwell, Nancy Ritter, David and Kathy Perkins, and friends and relatives of our members, David Ralston, Michelle, Betty, Karen, Anita, Christy, Sandy, Sean, Jillian, Ben, Lucille, Mary, and Autumn. Give hope to the dying, comfort those who mourn, Uphold all who suffer in body or mind, not only those we know and love, but also those known only to you, that they may know the peace and joy of your supporting care. We pray for those serving in the military, Jordan Smith, Jared Smith, Kyle Sundegaard, Mary Workman, Jay Brooke, and Chad Lawrence, and all those serving in police, fire, and emergency medical services, and all who serve the public good. Hear now our prayers for our own concerns, which we offer in silence. And hear us as we pray, as you have taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us stand for our closing hymn. Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way and keep your whole being, spirit, soul, and body free from every fault at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.